Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I found a way to use this microphone way better. This is uh, probably the best way to use it. Uh, you know, I just have to speak to it straight. So let's see how that's going to work with me holding my notes. So today I'm going to read an article uh, with you guys that I found on 1950s housewives. So I have not read the article in detail. I want to kind of be, you know, have a real reaction here and uh, discuss with you what I think about it, how it compares to today's times. And, you know, we, um, we of course, know that there are plenty of families when women are housewives. Um, it's not something that is extinct. Um, so... I'm going to see, uh, comparing to current technology and to current um, comforts of our times, how uh, this article compares to everything. So I'm just going to read parts of the article and let's dig in. The 1950s housewives, the best times or the worst times. For a woman, were the 1950s and 60s the best of times or the worst of times? The life of the average married woman in the 50s and 60s was very different from that of women today. This was the age of respectability and conformity. Very few women worked after getting married. They stayed at home to raise the children and keep house. So, you know, a lot of people say, Let's not go back to the old times. You were slave to men. Women were not allowed to work, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not true because uh, usually when women were not married and, um, you know, were still young, they would go to work and earn their own income. Uh, the way I see it, um, it's more like just changing jobs. You know, you got married, so now your job is to take care of the house. And I think a lot of, I'm, I don't know why, a lot of women uh, think like they're trapped and whatnot, but I have never really read that. I mean, of course, there were situations of, you know, abuse and, and stuff like that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was pretty rare and it still happens today. So um, it's just today, I think it's easier to get divorced than by, back of the day. With today's regulations and old school rules it's just so much easier than before so you know arguing that we want to bring back the old times and enslave women at home is in my opinion not true the man was considered the head of the household in all things mortgages legal documents bank accounts i believe that women were not allowed to have their bank accounts back in the day and like they say the man was the the main person on those documents um, however I also think from my research I what I found is that the man was responsible for the debt so nowadays you're married to men and uh, any debt and any sort of legal difficulties also falls on you but back in the day you were married and if there were any issues it was separate like the woman was not responsible for that because it was purely men's job and I can disagree with that because I think women can make uh, great accountants actually for these kind of things. And I think in Japanese culture, it's traditional that a man hands the woman all the money and she does all the accounting and legal activities. So, fun fact. Only the family allowance was paid directly to the mother. Should a woman find herself in a loveless or violent marriage, she was trapped. She had no money of her own and no career. Um, hmm. only the family allowance was paid directly to the mother so they're saying that she was getting money and then she was trapped and had no money it looks like she was getting some money yeah and allowance i think it's the extra money what they mean because you know there are expenses and then there's allowance it was still unusual for women to go to university especially working class women most left school and went straight into work until they got married. Secondary schools, even grammar schools, prepared girls for this life. 
Lessons were given the cookery, household management, darning, sewing, and even how to iron and shirt properly. Girls were trained to look after their husband, their children, and the house. Nothing very unusual for me. I honestly think these things should come back to education if they're gone from education. Some of these things my mother told me. And uh, when I was in elementary school, actually, in a normal public school in Poland, we have had cooking classes. Uh, we, not, we did sewing, yes, and iron a shirt, that's something that my mother would teach me. Yeah, so we had plenty of those um, classes, they were called labs or something, that were preparing people to, to have some life skills. This is just basic life skills, and I think a lot of kids just don't know how to do the basics. Unfortunately, with time, I don't know the reason, but it seems like it was the cost of it. They just took it away because um, it was either organizational problems or the cost problems. They just canceled those classes. And in my area where I grew up, they don't exist anymore. To my knowledge, at least to the last like five years, I think they don't exist. And when I was a teenager and growing up, they were gone. So yeah, uh, university was rare for women. And if they did go to university, a lot of them went there just to find a husband. <laughs> so they, they got a degree, but the reason was to get the husband because he's also there at the university, so he'll be educated and he'll be the provider. So that was another trick they would do. The house itself was very different from that of today. There was no central heating. The downstairs rooms were heated by coal fires. And then later, after the Clean Air Acts of 1956 and 68 by coke or grass fires. Upstairs, the heating was provided by color gas or paraffin stoves and electric fires. During the winter, it was common for ice to form on the inside of the windows. That's true. <laughs> Even in my own house, and it wasn't that long ago. Nighttime routine was hot water bottles in the beds and undressing downstairs in the warm. Thick dressing gowns and slippers were essentials. Every home had a coal hall or bunker. The coal men would carry the bags of coal to the coal bunker from where the coal was taken by coal cattle into the house. Yes, very different. So today, press a button, it's warm, and your whole house is warm. So look how much, um, how many tasks were taken away already from uh, a housewife, you know, normal regular routine tasks. The coal hall, my home at home, my home at home. In my home in the homeland has that. Uh, we have a basement uh, specifically designed for that. And, you know, we would have a truck, dump the coal, and then you would just uh, have to wake up in the morning and feed the fire in the basement. And then the hot water would go up in the pipes and whatnot. Now everything is automated. This is not even a thing anymore. And to be honest, my father would do that in the morning. He would just get up earlier than everyone else and, you know, the general rule was who wakes up first, they set the fire. So if we don't want to use the central heating, we use like a little fireplace. And who <laughs> wakes up first, you set the fire because, you know, it's cold in the home at, at winter, you know. I live in California now, so it doesn't apply that much to you just press the button and everything is set. It's either cooler or warmer. How convenient, right? I want to get back to the a paragraph about school and university. So, sure, they were not allowed. And look at today. Today, you can get a skill and a profession to have your, you know, safety net. And then you can go on and get married because you're still going to, if you do it right after high school, you're still very young. You can find a husband, you know, proper man to provide, um, have kids, whatnot, whatever you like, and be taken care of. And, you know, in today's world, divorce is so easy whatever, if anything happens, you do have that safety net and you have that profession. So not only that, a lot of women are getting education now and they're more fit for work and, and can do a lot of things that back in the day women maybe didn't have access to. And of course, with the rise of technology, there's a lot more different jobs. You can still do that. So today's housewife and the traditional values that we're trying to introduce to to keep America strong. <laughs> really, it's, that's what it is. And not only America, it's happening in a lot of countries. They're not bad. They're 
we not only that we can do what we did in the back we can do it better and we have more options we have a lot more freedoms as a woman so i do not want anyone to complain because it's it's really not bad it's really not bad in the kitchen fridges were becoming more common although freezers weren't unheard of it wasn't until the early 60s that local shops there were no supermarkets yep started stocking basic frozen foods such frozen peas and fish fingers they were purchased and cooked straight away as most people could not store them many people had only the pantry with its cold shelf where buttermilk cheese was stored the first taste of ice cold milk from a fridge was like nectar for a child used to milk from the cold shelf that's that sounds like there had to be a lot of canning done Trying, you know, in my country, when you have season for a fruit or you butcher an animal, you, you know, now you freeze it, but they they had to find ways to to make it last. So uh, a lot of canning was done, probably. And I mean, for, that's 100% sure. That's how you survive the rest of the year. Now it's so much easier because everything is just delivered from all around the world. But if you lived in a smaller village on a more limited place, you had to... You have to store it. That's why a lot of houses had basements and they're cooler. So those jars and all this food would last there. And not only that, you know, they were also dipped in vinegar and salt that would totally preserve everything. Shopping for food in the 50s and 60s was done every day as storing fresh food was difficult. Oh, here it is. A lot more work. Today, you're going to Costco <laughs> twice, twice a month. You have big refrigerators. You store it. You have entries we have shelf stable food it's really not that hard it's so much easier you know it takes work of course but imagine waking up every day in the morning to make sure the food is there that's that's a lot of work there were no supermarkets uh, housewives who s would visit the local baker and butcher the green grocer and the grocer individually carrying all her shopping home in baskets or in a pool along trolley. She would pride herself on budgeting and keeping within the weekly allowance that she would receive from her husband. Okay, I see what they mean by the allowance now. Uh, if she was so smart about budgeting, she probably put some money aside too, just in case. I'm sure a lot of women did that. Uh, yeah, because like, if they couldn't work, it wasn't... Um, see, that's why it's better nowadays, because... You can still work part-time like no man will stop you from working if you wanted to have your like own income or or they would just give you income as an allowance to yourself like it's way different and and men are so much more like gracious nowadays too i think if you know back in the day they forbid it you know i can see how it can be a little bit more stressful but the idea was also that you didn't divorce back in the day um, I think you had to have like a really good reason and you technically you were just provided you were with that person Most of your life, you know, we can look at divorce rates some other time Not many working or middle-class families had a family car along many had motorbikes Traffic was light especially down residential streets So children played in the street quite safely. I do remember, you know, it wasn't that long ago but my mom would also have to visit uh, separate stores uh, to make sure we have everything you know sometimes after her work at night she would come in the morning and she would have to visit multiple stores because where I grew up we didn't have supermarkets until way later. Monday was washing day in most households not just popping the clothes into the machine and then into the tumble dryer for the 50s woman if you were lucky enough to have a washing machine it would be a twin tub with mango on top this had to be filled from the tap one side had a washing machine, the other a spin dryer. After the clothes had washed, they were lifted out of the hot water with large wooden tongs, fed through the mango and then dropped into the spin dryer. The whole kitchen would fill with steam as uh, first the whites were washed and then the colored clothes as the water cooled. Very important. <laughs> there were no tampo dryers, so the winter or when it rained, clothes were hung on clothes horses or aries around the fire or in the kitchen where it was warm on other days clothes were pegged out to dry on clotheslines or with wooden pegs uh yeah easy today right pop it into the washer pop it into the dryer fold it or hang it and it's done 
what we had to do, we didn't have dryer. We always wash the clothes and then you have to hang them. And then you have to iron them because when you're hanging them, you know, they're still wrinkled. The dryer usually like kind of make it smooth, but you have to like iron everything and uh, then fold it and then pull it back. So it was a lot more work. It's so easy. It's still, it's still a lot of work today. You know, maybe that's why they, they, the woman probably back in 1950s, they wouldn't even want to go to work. Like when you spent your days working at home, we're here, you know, Popping things into the, the machine is just much easier, you know, dishwasher, boom, laundry, boom, it's done. The machine is doing, doing it for you. So you do have that extra time for your hobbies, your activities, your whatever you want to do, right? Sunday night was bath night. The water was heated by back boiler behind the coal fire or in the summer by an expensive, uh, expensive electric immersion heater. Hot water tanks would not store that much water, so shallow baths were the order of the day as the old family would wave in one after the other. I do remember those times still because of that issue with not having central heating. The water, hot water was, you know, not that common. And my mom would tell me they would uh, also do that, uh, just one bath. And they, even more back in the day, bath nights, oh, actually they say Sunday. In my country, it was Saturday bath night. I think because Sunday, was you know the church day so you gotta be clean and go to church you know it's more like that kind of thing so today you can have hot bath every day if you want <laughs> most households had vacuum cleaner and a cooker entertainment was provided by the radio or gramophone and more and more people were acquiring televisions these like telephones were rented not owned all televisions showed programmers in black and white. There were only two channels to watch, the BBC and the commercial channel. Well, I'm reading an article from UK, so that's probably why we have this. In Poland, it was a little different. It was uh, one TV per whole village <laughs> and one telephone per whole village. But, you know, when I grew up, we still had, we had everything, all of this and more. So, yeah, totally. We have plenty of entertainment, um, vacuums. Obviously, everyone has it. Nothing changes there. Clothes were often homemade, either sewn or knitted. Knitted items would, uh, when outgrown, were recycled by being unraveled and re-knitted into something else. When collars on shoes became frayed, they were unpicked, turned inside out, and sewed back on. All buttons and zips from old clothes were saved for the button box. Socks and stockings were darned. Totally true. That happened even in my childhood. You know, you didn't buy clothes all the time like nowadays. You just go and keep buying clothes all the time and they break and they're just such a bad quality. We learned how to sew. My mom had a box, you know, cookie box with all these buttons. Very disappointing when you go and try to find a cookie. Again, a lot easier nowadays. You typically don't do that, although I still do it. I don't like to, you know, go shop all the time and look for things, especially that I'm tall, it's harder. So I just repair if I can. And, and see how it goes. I keep clothes for a long time. Dinner would be on the table ready and waiting for the man of the house on his return from work. Housework and the care of children was considered woman work, so the man would expect the house to be clean and tidy, meal ready, children fed and washed, and his clothes all ready for the next day at work. It is work. Even nowadays, you know, if you were to do all of that, you, know, you have, you know, the man leaves for work in a traditional, like, kind of style. He leaves for work, you have eight hours to do all that, you know, and preparing meals is time absorbing. Um, and nowadays, you know, you, you do send, I mean, not nowadays, but I think when kids are bigger, like, like six, right, or even four, you send them to some sort of school, daycare. Uh, I think there are public ones when they get older, right? So you don't have kids with you all the time, so you can focus on all those things. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy even nowadays. So I don't agree with the fact that uh, people would condemn women or other women would tell women, oh, you don't work, you're just at home. You must have it nice. Totally, it's nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's probably very nice. But uh, it's still work. It's nothing free. And I'm talking about like normal, I guess, middle class family because, you know, we're not talking about the rich or multimillionaires who can just hire people to do it. Then you really are just sitting at home. <laughs> but that's rare. There was a succession of colors uh, to the 1950s house. There would uh, include the rack and bone man, a man with a horse and cart and coal 
of any old rags. The rag and bone man would buy your old clothes for a few pennies and mend your pots and pans when the bottoms were through. There was also the pop man from who you would buy lemonade, dandelion and burdock and soda. Each week you would return your empty bottles to him. Look, all the recycles, all these things. Alcoholic drink could be bought from the off license, often part of the local pub. Very raw. I, I kind of like that, you know, not so much waste. Uh, it's really great. The milkman came daily and delivered your milk right to your doorstep. He would take away the empty bottles and washed and reused. Local shops would deliver groceries, bread and meat. You know, <laughs> delivery existed, right? Oh, how nice. The uh, dustbin men worked extremely hard carrying the old metal dustbins on the backs from the householder's back door to the cart and then returning them back. No machine to do it. No truck. That's crazy. Yeah. So a lot of recycling. When I was a kid, we still did that. We would bring empty bottles to the store for a few cents and they would they would either sell it or reuse it as well. Uh, I hope it was easier to do it nowadays because you could literally go to any grocery store. Sorry, I'm kicking the camera. Uh, to the grocery store and just return it and get money. But um Today it's uh, much harder to do. You have to go to a specific place. So a lot. I I'm getting discouraged because I have to drive miles to, you know, get five bucks for all my recycling work. So it's often just not worth it. For the 50s housewife, there was no need to go to the gym. Her day-to-day -day jobs kept her physically active. She walked to the shops and took the children to school every day on foot. The housework she did was very labor-intense without today's gadgets and there were no such things as convenience food or fast food outlets, sweets and crisps. The only flavor available was ready salted <laughs> were treats rather than everyday foods. That is very important. That is so true. There was no snacking in between, you know, because you had to make everything yourself. So today... Uh, it's a lot harder to stay fit because of that reason. You just go and grab the snacks and buy the snacks. Everything's ready for you. You drive. You, you don't keep that physically active. That's for sure. Although I live in a smaller town right now and, and I do see a lot of uh, mothers walking their kids. So that's really cool to see. Yeah, but I do miss the time when I lived more in like a city thing. So you park your car. In one spot and then you walk to all the shops like you still had to get to the city but you just find the parking spot it was very limited so if you found one you just kept that one and then walk around so today a lot more convenient okay the 1950s housewife had been prepared both uh, at school and at home for her role on life she took pleasure and pride in looking after her home and family to the best of her ability However, on the other side of the coin, she didn't have a career outside the home and she had no income of her own, which left her dependent on her husband. Well, best of times or worst of times? Bit of both, it appears. So tell me in the comments, what do you think? Was it better or worse? I would say it was a little worse, you know, comparing to all the technologies and conveniences that we have. Um today being a housewife today is amazing you have all these conveniences you have everything and you can have that career you know i can see how it was difficult not to be able to have your own income and it probably wasn't so common to uh, for, for a woman to demand from the man hey you got you give me my own money too you know for myself probably wasn't um you know that common the man was it was like, I think it was a different dynamic and uh, I feel like women have it a lot easier and, you know, to a degree, I think the women would treat their men more like the boss, like they were more gentle with them. I believe maybe there was like less difficulties in relationship because like kind of everyone knew what their spot, what their tasks are and that made it easier to a certain degree right now. Nowadays, it's kind of like, I have to work, I'm the boss too, I have a say, I have a this and that, and of course we all should have a say, that's not my point, but I think the dynamic is so interrupted that we're losing our strengths, and women become very protective of anything they do, 
they become more like aggressive, more competitive, and that just brings out some of the things that are not the best in our gender. And uh, most of the time, my gender would have difficulty of controlling those emotions and and these kind of triggers. So um, it's definitely, I can see how it's more difficult to be a housewife unless there's some specific rule. But by societal structure that we have put in today, there has to be a lot of communication to make sure everybody's on the same page and everybody's respected. I do like that nowadays we have so many protections for women. If anything happens, you, you have so much support and nobody's like telling you if you let's say leave a husband or something happens they're like you were the bad wife like i'm pretty sure a lot of women back in the day were condemned like what did you do <laughs> like that he kicked you out or something or what did you do that you're getting divorced or something so uh, i can see that it could be happening in the more conservative society but now that we're so much op more open i feel like it's a lot easier so yeah tell me Tell me what you think in the comments and let me know if you like this kind of format of videos. I enjoyed reading the article, it was very informative and there was a lot of things I haven't known. So I will see you in the next video.